Hello guys, and welcome back to the second episode of Eric Moss Speaks Out. And today, it will just be me again. Uh, maybe I'll have some guests on next week's episode or a week after that. It will just be me. And if you guys watch episode one, you know what's going to be happening. I'm just going to be breaking down movie news. Movies coming out, movies coming out on DVD, movie trailer reviews, and box office. I'm not going to lean on sports and video games right now. I'm just going to concrete this on movies i eventually will get onto video games sports entertainment stuff like that but i will just leave it off at movies right now so um i have my phone if i need to look up anything like actors or whatnot on my imdb app um i am not supported by imdb don't get that but um yeah so here we go uh let's do the same format as last week so i'm going to break down movies that are coming out in theaters this week. First overall, we have a big one, very big one. Hunger Games Mockingjay Part 2 starring Jennifer Lawrence. It is the finale of the Hunger Games franchise as of right now. Uh, Lionsgate or Summit, I forget which one did Hunger Games, but they have said that they will, want, they will pursue prequels, sequels, spinoffs, as usual. Um, but I am not a big fan of the Hunger Games franchise. I thought the first one was mediocre. The second one was pretty horrible in my decision. A lot of people liked the second one was best. I thought it was pretty horrible. And third one, I felt, again, was mediocre. I feel like this franchise is just mediocre. This this last one is getting good reviews. It looked decent from trailers, so maybe it'll be decent. I don't know. I'm not... I think Jennifer Lawrence... I used to really love Jennifer Lawrence, and now I just feel like she's selling out. Um, she's just... I don't know. I just don't really care for her anymore as it used to. But anyways, other... One other main big release is The Night Before, which I actually might see this weekend. I mean, I'm, if I see any movies this weekend, maybe it's going to be Hunger Games or The Night Before. But The Night Before stars Anthony Mackie, Seth Rogen, Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Um, it's a raunchy comedy film, as usual, what Seth Rogen does. Um, looks hilarious from the trailer. It's Christmas-themed. It's about how them three trying to find the holy grail of parties in New York. And I just can't wait. Um, this movie looks pretty hilarious so i just cannot wait to go see it um then our last major release this week is this weekend is secret in their eyes i think or the secret in their eyes not really sure how if there's a thought or not but this one stars julia roberts and nicole kidman and chiwetel ejiofor uh i and for me it looks pretty horrible uh right now reviews are just average so this is more the film that looked like it was trying to go after uh, Oscars, possibly, but it just not really seemed like it will be. Shota Ejiofor is one of the most underrated actors today in the business, and I really hope that he can get big roles and stuff in the future like he has with Doctor Strange. And I don't know if this film is limited or wide. I know none of the theaters by me is having this film. So I'm th assuming it's limited, but it's Legend, the one with Tom Hardy playing two roles as the Cray Brothers in England. And Taron Egerton's also in it. And this movie looked really good from the trailers. Um, I really want to go see it. So maybe one day I will. Hopefully it comes in theaters or something so I'll be able to see it. So that, that wraps up movies that are coming out in theaters. Let's go on to movies that are out on DVDs. I'm really on a big lot today. Um, our big one this weekend. Did not this weekend. This week was The Man from UNCLE. Uh, starring Army Hammer, Henry Cavill, Alicia Vikander. Uh, I saw this movie a f like a week ago. I thought it was just okay. Um, I felt like it really fit what it was going for with the 60s spy movie and stuff. Guy Ritchie really did really well on it. But I don't know. I felt like the story wasn't the greatest. And it was just, I don't know. It didn't have enough action for me. But um, I thought Army Hammer did really well on this thing. Henry Kilo did okay. Alicia Vikander, I feel like she's going to be the next big thing in Hollywood. She keeps getting all these roles. She was an ex machina of this. Uh, the, she's going to be in The Danish Girl. I th I don't know. I'm thinking she's in the next Born film. I'm not 100% on that, but I think she signed on to be in the next Born film. So she's really becoming this pop priority in Hollywood. And recently, she's been rumored for the... Um, she's been rumored for... I'm forgetting the uh, Girl with the Dragon Tattoo sequel. Right now, she was originally the rumor name, but then Rooney Mara came back and said she was going to be coming back in it, like she did in the in the first one with Daniel Craig and David Fincher directing. But yeah, I thought this movie was okay. You know, I would rate it 6 out of 10. If you saw, if you were following me on Instagram, you would have seen that review, because um, I review movies that I feel like wouldn't really get me a lot of views on YouTube, on Instagram. And um, 
I give this movie six out of ten. I, it was right on my fresh zone. Um, but yeah, other big, other not really a big release, but We're Your Friends. This movie's only getting a DVD release. It's and it's not getting an additional Blu-ray release, which I'm really mad about because I really, even though this film is not the greatest, I would give this movie a six out of ten. Um, I did not review it here on the channel because I only saw it like a month ago. It's on my Instagram page. I'm giving this movie a six out of ten. But um, I really enjoyed watching. I seen, I saw it when I hit VOD again. Um, that's what this at a cheap theater, and then I saw it on VOD. And I really enjoyed watching the film. It's, I don't know, I just really enjoyed watching it. Um, too bad I didn't get a, a Blu-ray release. I guess I'm just gonna deal with VOD HD then. Uh, now, other one, uh, um, I don't really think it's a really big one. I know this film came out on limited release, the Sanford Prison Experiment. Don't know much about it. It came out on um, DVD only as well. Um, other, the other big release is the Hobbit, the Battle of the Five Arnies, Five Arnies, Five Armies Extended Edition. That's rated R. Um, I do not have. I had the first two Hobbit films on. Um, Blu-ray 3D. Do not have the last one, though, because there was no really good deal so far. Maybe I'll hit one on Black Friday. Okay, so let's move to um, the box office that happened this weekend from November 13th to November 15th. So, I'm going to move on to the box office. We wrapped up movies in theaters and movies on DVD, because there weren't really a lot. I don't really talk about that. Um, okay, let's go to box office-wise. Spectre was number one with 33.6 million, dropping 52.2%. The Peanuts movie was number two, making 24 million, dropping 45.7%. Love the Coopers was third, 8.3 million. The Martian was fourth, 6.7 million, dropping 26%. The 33 was fifth, making 5.7 million. Goosebumps was sixth, making 4.6 million, dropping 31.9%. Birds of Spies was number seven, making four point two million, dropping twenty six point eight percent. Um Pram Ratan Don Payo made two point four million. Hotel Transylvania two made two point three million, dropping thirty five point eight percent. And the last Witch Hunter made one point five million, dropping forty two point nine percent. That wrapped up the top ten. I'm gonna break this down and analyze it. Spectre had a really not good hold. You know, other a lot of people were expecting it to make to drop 60% the Quantum of Solace did, but I had, I think, I, I, Casino Royale had a better hold than this, but I think it had the second best hold in the Daniel Craig James Bond era, which was really good. I think Skyfall dropped 57% to make like 40 million. Um, but this film, I think, has made like a, I'm thinking like 130, 140 million right now. Not as big as Skyfall was, but still going to cross the 200 mark. It's made over 550 internationally already. Um, so it's going to be a big hit. It costed, rumoredly, 250 to $300 million to make, and it really shows with all the production design and cinematography and stuff. They really put a lot of effort into it. Uh, the Peanuts movie, I have yet to check this one out. I really want to see it. I love Peanuts. I love the, watching the Christmas Thanksgiving, Halloween specials they have for it. So, I have yet to see this. But, uh, this movie got great reviews. It's a family movie. That's why I hold up, uh, well. And, um, it's made, like, 80, 90 million so far. So, really good result. I heard that they can only make a sequel if the Shoals family approves it. Uh, Love the Coopers was as the third. This movie got horrible reviews. I don't see it holding up that well, even though it fits the holiday model. And it's a older crowd demographic movie. It just got horrible reviews. Do not see it holding up that well. I think it drops at least 50% this weekend and gets out of theaters by at least in the heart of the sea. Uh, fourth movie was The Martian. Finally, saw it. I put up a review of this and I finally saw it like two weeks ago. It was really great. Um, love seeing this movie holding up so well. It's made 200 million, over 200 million, and like over f almost 500 million internationally. So, really doing well. 33. Um, I have yet to see this movie. It really intrigued me, but I didn't feel like going out of the theaters to watch it. I'll eventually watch it probably before the end of the year. But, um, it made a decent amount of money, um, but it didn't make a whole lot. Um, it cost $24 million to make. I think it's made like 20 to $30 million internationally. So, I'm not sure too much of well. I'm not good with international numbers, but, um, yeah. I think it. I think it did okay. I think. I think they wanted a bit more though. Uh, Goosebumps. I really enjoyed Goosebumps. Uh, glad it keeps on making good holds. I think everyone should go see the movie. Jack Black's really great in it. 
He puts a lot of comedic moments in this film. So yeah. Uh, Bridge of Spies. Never seen it. Thought it was Boarfest. Um, but it's an Oscar film and leads to older demographics. That's why it's holding up so well. Prem Ratan Don Payo is a Bollywood film, I think. Uh, and these films usually do well opening week. And they usually make like 2 million. And they just fall in obscurity after that. <laughs> but um, yeah, these films usually do r really well opening weekend. So yeah. Uh, Hotel Transylvania 2. I'm surprised this movie is still making money. Um, I thought this movie was going to be crap. It actually got decent reviews. I've not seen it yet. But uh, it keeps making money. Maybe I'll see it by the, before the end of the year. In The Last Witch Hunter, uh, this movie looked like crap. It got crap reviews, and that's why I did it so poorly. It's only made like $30 million. So, um, yeah. Uh, that's my roundup of the box office. You see, this video is moving a bit faster than last week. Um, right, right now, about to hit 11 minutes. So maybe I'll get this. Maybe this video will be done with like 30 minutes in. Uh, let me move on to my movie trailer reviews. I wrap up the big movie trailers that came out in the last week. So let's get on. Um, movie trailer that hit today, The Huntsman's Winter's War, starring Chris Hemsworth, Jessica Justine, Emily Blunt, and Charlie Theron. Emily Blunt's one of my favorite actresses working today. This is a prequel to, and sequel to the Snow White and Huntsman film. I'm pretty sure it's a prequel and sequel. I know it's at least a sequel. I think they have some prequel parts in it. But yeah, um, never seen Snow White and Huntsman. Know how it ends, though. And I feel like this trailer gave away the ending of that film. So if you're not seeing Snow White and Huntsman, don't watch this trailer. Uh, um, but this movie, I don't know, I'm just kidding. I thought the movie was okay at the beginning of the trailer. But once they put that song in, it was just... I don't know. I don't know. It seems going too much a Disney route. It has the dark elements Disney cannot do. But it feel I don't know. I just f CGI is not the greatest... Uh, the acting doesn't look the greatest. I thought Emily Blunt looks, I don't know, she looks pretty pathetic in this role. I don't, Charlie Theron, I don't, why, what are you doing to yourself, Chris Hemsworth? Why are you picking these crap movies? Um, this movie just looks really, really, um, mediocre. Um, maybe by a second trailer, maybe it'll be better, but I'm, I'm getting a mediocre vibe for it. Anyway. Let's move on to the other trailer that came out today was Now You See Me Too. If you know me, if you know me personally, at least, I think I ranted on this in my Instagram page one day. I absolutely hate it, Now You See Me. I thought it was a bore. I thought it was boring, stupid. It has to deal with magic, but that do you see GI from the magic, which, which totally deprives the magic of magic. And I thought this movie was. I thought the first one was pretty horrible. Second one, maybe be enjoyable. Um, we don't really get to see a lot. The trailer's only like a minute long. So not really a whole lot. Oh, we saw Daniel Radcliffe. Though. Daniel Radcliffe is an underrated talent in Hollywood. He usually does really well in his roles. Um, they bring back everyone from the first one, except for Isla Fisher, Fisher. And I think that's because I think I read somewhere she was pregnant at the time of filming. So they recast. So they got rid of her character. And they, re they got a new character played by Lucy Kaplan, who's in the interview and now upcoming Night Before film. Um, Jesse Eisenberg has short hair in this, which, me which I'm assuming he gets bald in Batman v Superman. Um, Dave Franco can get really annoying in films. Um, he kind of whines too much in films. Uh, if you've ever seen him in his roles. And Woody Harrelson, you know, why, why are you doing this to yourself, Woody? Uh, he can, he's much better than that. Um, but, uh, yeah. Um, looks okay. I'm not gonna say it looks crap, but I need to see a bit more story and, story and footage to really gain a really opinion on this. And then let's go to trailer that came out also today. We had three trailers today, and this is Zoolander 2, sequel to the cult classic Zoolander starring Ben Stiller. This one returns Ben Stiller, Owen Wilson. I'm not too familiar with the first Zoolander. I heard of it. Never seen it before. Um, but this movie, I thought the beginning the beginning of the trailer was not good. But the ending really was hilarious. Um, parts with Will Ferrell. Will Ferrell played, I think, the antagonist in this film. He's, his part was hilarious with the latte and stuff. And uh, there's at the very end of the trailer, they show um, Owen Wilson um, throwing stuff at Ben Stiller. And it's, re it's really hilarious. 
But uh, I feel like this film is going to be so stupid. It's going to be, it's so stupid that it's so good type of film. Like the first one was I heard supposedly. But um, looks looks okay. It comes out Valentine's Day weekend. Um, also, uh, I didn't tell the release dates of the last two films. Huntsman comes out um, April next year. And Now You See Me comes out in June. Um, but yeah, this one comes out on Valentine's Day weekend with... Um, Deadpool and How to Be Single, which I did not see the How to Be Single trailer. I, I'm not reviewing that. So, um, uh, Zoolander 2 looks like it can be fun and enjoyable, and it could be fit in that whole so bad it's so good type mentality. So, maybe it'll be like that. Um, the film that a trailer dropped last week, no, not last week, yesterday was Gods of Egypt. This movie also comes out late February. With uh, Gerard Butler, Brandon Thwaites, Shadwick Boseman, and a few other people. This movie looks... I don't... This movie looks really horrible. I This week has really come up with a lot of horrible films in trailer-wise. Uh, CGI looks totally dated. Um, It looks like CGI from 2005. And it's just... It really... CGI can really provide an eyesore on me. Um, you know, most of the time I can just look past CGI, but they can really provide an eyesore on me. And this CGI looks really eyesore. Acting doesn't look the greatest. Um, Plot-wise, doesn't look the greatest. The movie, it's gonna, it's again, it's one of those films that you just watch and turn off your brain and just watch it. Like I heard Last Witch Hunter was not a good movie, but it was fun to watch. Um, so it'll probably be like a Last Witch Hunter film where it's bad you know it's bad but you enjoy watching it type thing so um yeah that's my review of gods of egypt trailer next week we also got the third film in the divergent series a legion i think legion or ascendant i know they renamed the next two films i don't know um but uh film looks okay looks the best out of the two i saw the first one first film looked horrible second film i've not seen that yet maybe i'll probably watch it before the end of the year um, but Jeff Daniels is in this one. Miles Teller is in this one. Miles, why did you pick this f film franchise? Um, he, Miles Teller does not have the best agent. He picks the v Divergent franchise, and then he picks um, Fantastic Four. I enjoyed Fantastic Four. I really enjoyed it. Is it the best movie of all time? No. And uh, I feel like the only good film Miles Teller has made is... Um, whiplash um <laughs> but he really he, he he has talent um so i feel like he needs a better agent but film looks okay nothing special um it looks the best out of the three which is not saying that much um but yeah um then go on to movie news because i'm tired of talking about these crap trailers this week except for zoolander 2 um now uh movie news um uh, now i got all this information from the coming soon.net dot coming soon.net website and i i am not associated with them i just get all my information from there so if you have not seen their website go do that anyways let's start this out now this movie news could be coming from last week and it could be coming from this week um it's kind of mixed um so let's let's um come up with no, my first one Snowpiercer, which is a film I really absolutely loved last year, is now becoming a TV show, and uh, it's written by Josh Fry Friedman, who I think did uh, Avatar 2, and I'm getting on to his other, other um, um, writing accomplishments. So he did Avatar 2, Avatar 3, uh, he did Terminator the Sarah Connor Chronicles and uh, War of the World Chain Reaction and the Black Dahlia. Um, I actually really, really love Snowpiercer. I don't know what channel this will be coming on or if it's going to be like a streaming thing like on Netflix. I'm going to try to get on my phone to check out more information on that. But, uh, you know, I, I, I really enjoy the path they're taking on this film. This film does not need another sequel, but it can definitely work as a TV show. Um, so, uh, hopefully they don't, hopefully they continue off from the TV show. I'm hoping they don't, um, they don't, um, redo, uh, the movie, because the movie was really well, and, yeah, so I'm hoping they just can continue off the movie, and continue off the, the Asian woman, and, uh, the little kid that, 
that will take life. Because it looked like Chris Evans died. They never really saw his body. So you can't really say anything died yet. But yeah. Okay, my next film, next movie news is Amy Ledecker and Scott Atkins join Doctor Strange in mysterious roles. Amy Ledecker has done Project Almanac, a few TV shows, Enough Said, A Serious Man. Um, Scott Atkins has done, uh, I'm getting on to his film, Scott Atkins, um, Scott Atkins. Uh, Legend of Hercules, Expendables 2, Zero Dark Thirty, X Men Origins, Wolverine, Born Ultimatum. So he has not picked the best of films. Um, but, you know, they, they're in mysterious roles, so we can't say anything yet. So I don't know who they're going to be playing. But uh, Doctor Strange is really underway filming right now. I think they're filming up in England right now. They already filmed the scene they did down in Libya, I think. Um, so yeah, don't know much about the, these got these people. They're really not really they're known, but not really known. Known, you know, they could be a uh, really good actors if they give them the right role. Next movie news I have is Fifty Shades of Grey sequels will be filmed back to back. And why are they making these films? Why? Why? Just why? Just explain to me why. Um, did the last one come out this year? For some reason, I'm feeling it came out last year. No, no, it came out this year, yeah, it came out this year with Kingsman. Um, um, but yeah, uh, next one comes out 2017, the other one comes out 2018. Um, why did the actors approve to be in this film? Don't know why, it's really horrible. Um, not see the first one, but I heard it was really horrible, and I don't want to see the first one. That's like the only film I will not see. You know, I'll... Maybe I'll eventually watch it, but it's not going to be from like, I gotta watch before I die type thing. So yeah, so they're just from back to back. I think they got the same director for both ones. So yeah. Uh, Doug Lyman, other bit news. Doug Lyman, the director of Edge of Tomorrow, I think he did one of the Bourne films, if I'm not mistaken. I'm going to go on his filmography. But he will be helming the Gambit film with uh, Channing Tatum and uh, Leah Sado from... Uh, the, the Spectre. Uh, so Doug Lyman has done Edge of Tomorrow, Jumper, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, The Born Identity. And he, I think he's doing the next one born. No, he's doing that film called Mena um, with Tom Cruise. Um, so yeah, he's going to be uh, doing Gambit. I heard this film might get pushed back to 2017 because I heard, I read a comment saying Simon Kimberg has said we hopefully start shooting by spring of next year. Which obviously would be too late to release in October. So yeah, probably somewhere. Do not. I would not be surprised to put at the October. They push it back a whole year due to um, just trying to get the script right. I think Fox knows that they messed up on Fantastic Four, and I think they're really going to try to put a lot of more focus on getting the script correct, to getting the right director. And again, the cast members have been fine. It's just getting the right director and getting the script correct. And uh, I think Doug Lyman's a really good director. I really love Edge of Tomorrow. Edge of Tomorrow was my second favorite film of last year. So yeah, I approve of this. Uh, Patricia Arquette from uh, a lot of the um, Richard Linklater films, like Before Midnight, Before Sunrise, Before something, Before Sunset. I don't Before Dawn, I think it was called. No, because Dawn and Sunrise are the same. Before Dusk? No. No, no. I'm, I'm getting these films wrong. Um, but she's going to be voicing a character in Toy Story 4. Now, she's an Oscar-winning actress. She won Best Supporting Actress at the um, film Boyhood. Um, so, I approve of this um, news. I think she can really... Uh, I don't know who she can be. For some reason, I, I'm envisioning... I don't know. Um, for some reason, I'm envisioning... A, like a mom type toy. I feel like she could play a mom type toy in this. Um, but yeah, you know, she's a good actress. Um, she's totally underrated. Um, so I really approve of this. Um, I love the Pixar, how they go with uh, their voices. And yeah, so I'm really good about this news. Um, so uh, another bit of news is Alien Paradise Lost is now called Alien Covenant. Um, that Alien Paradise Lost was the sequel to Prometheus 2. 
and was was originally Prometheus 2, they renamed it Alien Paradise Lost, and now they're renaming it Alien Covenant, and they also get a release date, October 6, 2017, and uh, Ridley Scott's returning to direct, and Michael Fassman is returning, supposedly, they have not heard anything about Rooney Mara returning, but the plot, I don't have it with me right now, but I heard the plot was where the, um, the, forgetting, I'm forgetting the name, I'm forgetting the, a spaceship of Covenant, um, the spaceship covenant come and the astronauts in it come to a place they think as paradise but they soon find out it's not paradise and a th synthetic human david from the first prometheus film is on there as well so i don't know i think it was something like that but yeah um uh ridley scott really proved himself with um the martian so yeah maybe i'll this movie probably good hopefully yeah I did not see Prometheus. I saw bits and pieces of it, but was not the greatest film. Um, other big news: Michael Giacchino, Giacchino, I can't pronounce his last name. Michael Giacchino is going to be composing Zootopia, which is a Disney film that comes out next March it's with Jason Bateman, Idris Elba. I'm forgetting her name. I'm forgetting her name. Oh God, I'm forgetting her name, guys. Oh. Oh my god, I gotta search it. Um, I know she's a lead, she's a rabbit. Oh, um, I, I, I know, I know, I, uh, I'm getting her image in my mind. Jennifer Goodwin, Jennifer Goodwin's gonna be voicing the lead, um, the rabbit. Jason Bateman, J.K. Simmons, Alan, T Alan Tudyk, Eva Selba. A lot of known people in this film. Um, but Michael Giacchino is one of my favorite composers working today. I prefer Hans Zimmer. But Michael Giacchino did a lot of good soundtracks I enjoyed, like Up, Inside Out, Jurassic World. But I prefer Hans Zimmer to him, but Michael Giacchino is really good at composer. So Zootopia has really got a nice positive going along with them. Other bit of news, Memento is getting remade. Why a lot of people are asking, a lot of people love Memento. It was one of Christopher Nolan's first films. I have not seen it myself. I really plan on watching it because I'm a really big Christopher Nolan fan. I love what he did with Interstellar. I loved Inception. I loved all the three Dark Knight films. I think I watched Prestige, that, and Insomnia. Prestige, Memento, Insomnia, to really gain myself a, to really gain the prestige of a true Christopher Nolan fan. But a lot of people are asking why it, this film does not need a remake, in my opinion. Um, it does not feel dated. It does not feel like a film that needs a remake. So yeah, a lot of people are asking why they don't want to ruin it. Um, there are certain films where I agree on being remade. Like, I feel like Back to the Future could be a good remake now, but I feel like also it could not because it feels like it's more of a 80s film. It feels, it, it fits that 80s film mo mode. And I think Memento is a thing that you cannot redo. It's, it's like, you just cannot. Other bit of news, I have Fast and Furious spinoffs, prequels, are in development. Like, everyone asked for that, um... What, are they going to make a film centered on Tyrese Gibson? Are they going to make a film centered on Vin Diesel? Um, Fast and Furious is becoming a really, really exaggerated film franchise. Sorry if you heard that creak that was on my chair. It's still coming. Um, but um, it's a film franchise I don't love. I I saw Fast Five. That was the best one I ever have yet to see six and seven. But no one is asking for spinoffs. You should have just ended it at seven, in my opinion. But they made, uh, they said that they want to do one, two more films. I don't know. I don't know what they're going with this franchise. This last one made one point five million, one five, one point five billion. I mean, and I don't know why a lot of people saw those films. Don't know why. Don't know why. I did not see it yet. I plan on watching before the end of the year. But again, why? Um, so yeah. Um, also, we have Matthew McConaughey is up for Lee Rowe in The Dark Tower. I think that's a Stephen King. I think that's a Stephen King movie they're making by Sony. I'm going to search it uh, on uh, The Dark Tower. The Dark Tower is a gunslinger Roland Deschain roams an old west-like landscape in search of a dark tower in hopes that reaching it will preserve his dying world. Yeah, it is a Stephen King. It is a Stephen King book. I knew it. 
Um, but I'm guessing he's gonna play the uh, lead actor in it. I'm fine. Matthew kind of really annoyed me at first. I'm fine with him now. Uh, I felt like he should not win the Oscar the year he won. I felt like he should have been short to Edge of Four. But yeah, he really gained my trust with uh, Interstellar. So yeah, I'm fine with this news. Even if he plays a villain, I'm fine with that as well. Uh, he was originally up for a villain in Matt. Not Matt. Guardians of the Galaxy 2, which I would have felt really weird. Um, uh, I got two more news here. Um, Val Kimmer is going to be in the sequel of Top Gun, Top Gun 2, with Tom Cruise. And I feel like they're just making this film to honor Tony Scott, which died a few years ago, I think. Yeah, he, I know he died, I think a few years ago. I'm, I'm making this like it's be a joke, but it's not. Um, but I feel like this one making now to be a tribute for Tony Scott. I don't know who's going to be helming it. Um, but a lot of people think Top Gun's overrated. A lot of people don't really care for Top Gun. And yeah, I've never seen Top Gun myself. Maybe I'll see it eventually. Um, but yes. Um, but yeah, I will be... Um, I'm okay with this new. Val Kimmer is a f guy who's not been a lot. I'm searching my next uh, details of my next thing. So, yeah. Uh, my very last movie news I will talk to you guys about is Tomb Raider has a director and screenwriter. Um, trying to look up who's directing it. And um, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Um, I'm okay with Tomb Raider. I have yet to play. I really want to play the, the last game and they released another game. Um, here we go. Okay, here we go. The Nor some Norwegian director named Roar Yatag, don't know how to pronounce his last name, sorry if I butchered that, will be directing, while newcomer Geneva Robertson Dorette is set to write. The film will be developed by movie studios, MGM, Warner Brothers, and JK Films. Um... I don't know any of them, um, to be honest. I feel like a good fit for Tomb Raider would be um, Gemma Artarion. I, I if I'm going to pronounce that correct. She was um, she was uh, from Prince of Persia. She was in Hansel and Gretel, Witch Hunters. I feel like she would be a good fit. A lot of people are saying uh, I wouldn't mind Alicia Vikander. Um, I think she could really do it. And a lot of people now are saying Daisy Ridley from Star Wars Episode 7. I don't know if she could, you could fit that in her schedule, to be honest. She's going to be filming a lot of Star Wars films for at least the next couple years. Um, and so, yeah. Um, I'm really... Uh, I really uh, feel like they can make a good Tomb Raider film. I'm really hoping for an Uncharted film. Sony, get on, get on your butt with that one. Get a director. They do have a director, but I heard that he might be out. They originally wanted Chris Pratt. Chris Pratt, you better take Indiana Jones. I can tell you that. Um, but yeah. I remember they were originally moving ahead with Uncharted back like a few years ago with Mark Wahlberg as Nathan Drake, Robert De Niro as a role, and someone else. Uh, with David O. Russell directing. David O. Russell is a guy I would not expect to direct that type of film, but yeah. Um, but yeah, that's my final bit of news, guys. Uh, this is where Eric Moss speaks out. Episode 2 will end. So leave in the comment box below what you, comments box below what you guys thought of any of the topics I did. Movies in theaters, movies coming on DVD, movie news, trailer reviews, box office. Put it down in the, put it down in the comments if you guys have any questions, you guys want to talk about any of the stuff I want to add. Anyways, um, on the screen you'll see my Twitter and Instagram. Username, follow those. Instagram, I review movies that I don't review on here sometimes. So if you want to see more up-to-date stuff with movies, follow that. Uh, Twitter, I don't really use a lot, um, but I still have it. Um, and also, my Facebook page is also going to be on the screen now. Um, it's going to be a film that... Uh, not film. Uh, it's, I don't really use the profile as much as I used to do. My The page... Uh, I always forget about it. Um, so, yeah. You know, you can check it out if you want to. But, yeah. Uh, please like and share me with your friends and family. I really want this to be next. My really trademark of my channel. If, if staple. Stuff like that on my channel. So, I want every guys to share this video. Like this video. If you have not subscribed, please do. I probably advertised that earlier on. 
But yeah, I if you guys want to see more Eric Moss Speaks Out, subscribe. Because this is going to be a weekly thing with possibly me and other people as well. So yeah. But that's where I leave it off, guys, today. This episode is going to be like a minute or two shorter than the other one. But yeah, I hope everyone has a good day. And... I'll be back with another epi episode of Eric Moss Speaks Out. Probably next week, hopefully. Um, but yeah. So I hope to see y'all guys t next week. Uh, maybe another review. This probably be, yeah, this probably be my... I'll probably film something next week and put it up next week before Eric Moss Speaks Out. But this probably be my final video of this week. So anyway, I'll see you guys next time and goodbye.